At this point, we know what is the mathematical model we need to solve, the governing equations and boundary conditions. Next, let's consider how ANSYS will solve it for us numerically using the finite element method. So if I go back to the framework of what's inside the black box, we are moving from talking about the mathematical model to talking about the numerical solution procedure. Now, the strategy of the finite element method is to divide the domain into elements and nodes. And so if that's a domain, I'm ignoring the whole here, just uh, for the sake of simplicity. I'm trying to get at the conceptual big ideas. Um, the elements would be, you know, these uh, rectangles. So we have nine, and then the corners we can think of as nodes. And we say we'll reduce the problem to determining displacement values only at the nodes. Here I have one, two, three, four times four, 16 nodes. That means I'm reducing the problem to finding 16 U values and 16 V values. Our original problem involved solving differential equations to find two unknown functions, u and v. But now we have reduced the problem to finding 32 discrete values. Solving differential equations to find unknown functions is hard. Solving, um, you know, the, the same differential equation by converting it to algebraic equations and determining you know discrete values is not as hard if you have computers and software. So this is discretization. It's it's a major you know leap in the problem solving process. And then if we want to find the value anywhere else, we use a polynomial interpolation to relate u and v at any point within an element to the nodal displacements. So if I have you know, if I want to know what's the value of u over there, I have to determine it in terms of the nodal values. And you can see that, you know, this would be a weighted average of these four values. And in this case, you know, this would be, this value would be weighted the most, this value would be weighted the least. And the weights are given by the shape functions. Um, so I have the element by element polynomial interpolation. So now the problem has been reducing to reduce has been reduced to finding the nodal displacements, um, thirty two total in in this you know problem that we are considering. Of course, when we go into answers, we have a lot more nodal displacements. How do we do that? We go from the boundary value problem to a set of algebraic equations and the nodal displacements using the element by element polynomial interpolation for u and v. There's a lot of detail there. ANSYS takes care of the details for us, so more power to it. And essentially, we are going from calculus to linear algebra. And each algebraic equation will relate a nodal displacement to its neighbors. Um, so if I write the uh, algebraic equation corresponding to equilibrium in the x direction, at this node, it will involve these displacement values and not, you know, not the ones that are away from those those values and that's because if I change the value here it will affect only the interpolations in the elements attached to it. Now this set of algebraic equations you know is usually written as kd equal to f. k is the stiffness matrix and it's sparse because of, of this this property and then you know answers will invert the algebraic equations for us and determine the nodal displacements and once we have the nodal displacements uh, everything else, such as the displacement field, the strains and the stresses, can be determined through post-processing. Now, you may be wondering, wait a second, you know, don't you need the principle of virtual work to derive the algebraic equations or discrete equations? That's because most finite element treatments in solid mechanics, you know, start with the principle of virtual work. So, Whereas I started with the boundary value problem, um, and you know, so and and mentioned that you go to the set of algebraic equations from that. Whereas most textbooks start at this point, the principle of virtual work. Now at equilibrium, every vanishingly small chunk 
is, you know, the, the forces have to balance on it. So that's where we have the boundary value problem. So equilibrium is satisfied. But also at equilibrium, the total potential energy of the system is minimum. And the principle of virtual work is based on that. So it's a minimization problem rather than a boundary value problem. But you can start with the minimization problem and end up with the same uh, set of algebraic equations through the same element by element polynomial interpolation. So the endpoint is the same. And I mentioned this as a starting point because boundary value problems appear in you know, fluid mechanics, in, uh, in heat transfer, whereas the virtual work principle is specific to solid mechanics. So that's why I like this view of things um, when thinking through how ANSYS is doing it. As the user, the most important thing we are concerned about is what is the how to reduce the error in the finite element solution. Because in going from the boundary value problem to a set of algebraic equations, you're introducing a numerical error. Now, since that this process, it, you know, is is done through that element by element polynomial interpolation, the lever that you have to decrease the error is that polynomial interpolation. So. As the polynomial interpolation gets better, the finite element solution tends to the exact solution. So we have to think about how we can make the polynomial interpolation better. One is by increasing the number of elements. So this is our original mesh. And we refine the mesh. Uh, so we have twice the number of elements in each direction. So we go from 9 elements to 36 elements. So here, we are representing the field as, uh, you know, as the unknown functions as a combination of nine polynomials. Whereas here, I'm representing it as 36 polynomials. Obviously, the latter is better. And I think this is intuitive, but there's another less intuitive way to, to do this, which is to increase the order of polynomial within each element. So if I'm only calculating, uh, you know, determining the um, values at the corners, so if I need to f do an interpolation and find the value here in terms of these values, now this would be, this value here would be an interpolation between this value and this value. And that would be a linear interpolation because if you have two values, all you can do is a linear interpolation. Now if I also have a mid-side node, that is I determine the displacement not only at these corners but also at the mid-sides, now to find this value I have I do a weighted average of three values, which means that's uh, a quadratic interpolation. So by using mid-side nodes for each element, you go to the second order interpolation or quadratic interpolation, which also will reduce the error. And answers, and we'll see that answers does this by default. So which means that we really need to increase the number of elements uh, to uh, decrease the, the numerical error. That's the lever we have. It turns out that the shape of the element also matters uh, in terms of numerical error, but we will, uh, we will not get into that in, in this particular uh, example.